Welcome back to lockdown. I'm entering that difficult hair stage. Now for the most part, communities seem to be coping reasonably well. There are going to be people that this is going to be particularly difficult for at this time. People that have got health issues or mental health issues that will be struggling. And we need to you know, help and support them as much as possible. Now, that being said, there are still those people as well that just aren't interested in helping anybody but themselves. Now, I'm only really going to talk about what I've seen uh, in the UK more than anything else, uh, because some of the scenes in other countries are just mind-bogglingly just, well, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So, what has annoyed me? Well... There are still people that just are refusing to self-isolate, you know, going on uh, trips around the country, trying to go to caravan sites and go camping into second homes. You know, at the end of the day, there are people risking their lives on a daily basis to make sure that we can eat, that we're safe and that we have medical care. And you prats can't even be bothered to stay in your home. Come on. Then there's, you know, obviously everyone's trying to get that bit of exercise in whenever they can, which is, you know, it's essential, do it safely, stay away from people, you know. Uh, but even that, there are people, the other day, I mean, I live in a small village, I wait till it's late in the evening, I go for a walk around the village, if I see somebody else, I cross to the side of the road or walk down the middle of the road, um, and, you know, obviously make sure I keep myself safe. The other week, and this has happened two days now in a row, I was walking down, and it's a small village. You get, you know, people that live there, or you know, you know, you see them about and whatever else. Two different occasions, two couples, one walking down one side of the road, one walking down the other side of the road, which means you have to walk up the middle of the road. Why be that? You know, they've been they've been walking around with each other for 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 weeks now, so it's nothing to do with the need to be separate or anything like that. Um, because you see them, you, you walk, and then you'll see them like somewhere else in the village, and they're walking together again. It's, you know, it's your, why be that much of an asshole that you're going to make someone have to walk down the middle of the road because you, you, for whatever reason, one of you decided to cross the road and the other one hadn't yet. D do it together! Just, I don't know. Um, again, something else I've seen, there's lots of plea people complaining, oh, I'm bored, I'm bored. Um, however, a lot of these people seem to have been able to take the time to um, pose for the photo they're putting up with that, oh, I'm so bored, and get their hair right and their lipstick right and their makeup right. I'm not just, there's, well, I know you're thinking, I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's actually mostly men I'm talking about, actually, uh, but both sexes. Um, the thing is, I mean, I've been off now just because of whatever reason um, for about five six weeks now and in that entire time I haven't been bored and that's because I've kept myself busy I've given myself things to do I've made plans um, I mean I'm lucky enough to have a garden I appreciate not everybody has that so I've been out in the garden a little bit helping I've done things around the house I've redone rooms I you know I've kept myself busy I'm messaging friends I'm you know having video calls or um, phone calls with friends, I'm making sure I'm keeping on top of all my cleaning and tidying, I've gone through my wardrobe, there are things to do, you know, just, you know, have a go at something, something you've been putting off, do that, something you may need to sort out, do that, make plans, come up with ideas, come up with things you want to do when this is over, but, you know, don't just go on board, stop it. Another thing that um, seems to have make a podcast, something else you can do, make or make a video or something, just find something to do. But anyway, moving on, is 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 the media um, and especially news outlets because we're getting a lot of negative news. We're seeing very little positive news, and there is positive news out there. If you have a look for it, there is plenty of positive news out there. Yes, of course, of course, of course, we need to know the things that are happening and we need to be kept abreast of what the situations are. And it's a terrible time for people, especially people that are losing loved ones. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't get the other side of the story as well. 
the the people that have come through the other side, the people that have done something for other people, and there seems to be a lack of that at the moment. But far worse than that is the actual blatant misinformation that's coming out. And I'm not like one of these conspiracy theory nuts or anything like that. What I'm on about is when the news outlets seem to be treating people stupid, as if they're stupid. Um, I mean, you know, we had we saw the prime minister in hospital. Uh, and things like that. And before it, all of that happened, the government had laid out its plans, it, would, it had told us what it was going to do, and I think the response has been reasonable, but that's a different, that's, that's not what we're going to talk about now. Um, I mean, when, before the Prime Minister went into hospital, and before, you know, he was, he was doing everything else, they laid out their strategy, they said, this is what we're going to do, it's going to be done in stages, if something happens to the Prime Minister, this is who's going to be leading the government, this will be who's taking over, this is what their position is, and this was all laid out nicely. Then Boris Johnson goes, or sort of falls ill, and, you know, is, in, is a self-isolating, and many news agencies, including the BBC, which is supposed to be like the pinnacle, are like, oh my god, who's going to be running the country? Who's it going to be? We don't know who it's going to be. I don't know. Who's, who's it going to be? Well, let's just tell you what we think it's going to be. And we've already been told. The Prime Minister stood at the podium and said, if something happens to me, this is who's going to be leading the government. So all of this, oh, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We did know. What was that all about? That's just bad information. And it's misinformation to the public. Why don't they just come out and say, look, something happens to Boris Johnson, we've already heard him say, run the clip, this is who's going to be in charge. But that's not sensational. And then we get this bizarre comparison, which is, this is the one that annoyed me even more, between America and here. Well, we don't have a, a deputy prime minister as such, like, the, like in America where they have the president and then they have the vice president. And then they made a massive thing about it, how, like, well, America's got the vice president and they're prepared. And, you know, we don't have a deputy prime minister. And there's this whole thing made out of it. The president is the United States of America's head of state. The prime minister is not a head of state. For a start, the queen is our head of state. If something happens to the Queen, then Prince Charles takes over. If Prince Charles takes over, uh, something happens to Prince Charles rather, Prince William takes over. If something happens to Prince William, then his son takes over. If something happens to his son, then his daughter takes over. There is a line of succession. It is an orderly form of succession. So all of this, oh my god, we don't have a vice president, that's because we're not a republic. And actually, if you bother to take the time to actually look up government structures, a republic is not a democratic form of government. But, well, I mean, it is semi-democratic in America just because of the way they do things, although their voting system is weird. And we're kind of getting off topic again. But again, complete misinformation. Complete making something that from something that just isn't there. We've been told he was in charge. We've been told that what happens if that person is in charge. We were comparing two completely different styles of government. One, and you were trying to, to, to mirror a head of state to a prime minister, which again, just bizarre, but just, oh, really just, just, you know, and it, I think this is what, the media I think has made everything not worse, because you can't really make it worse, it's as bad as it gets, but they have enabled fear to, you know, and, and panic to be more than maybe it would have been had things done in a, had, had things been done in a slightly more orderly fashion. I mean, I'm lucky. I live in a household where my mother has worked for the NHS for over 40 years. So, you know, I, I can take, take things, you know, well, I can get information when I desire to, to make sure that I'm doing everything correctly. But, you know, it's, it's just that, that there's just been so much of it, 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 it just needs to stop. You know, we, need, we, we as the public need to just say, look, hold on a minute. And we need to be making sure that, you know, we look at more than one source and more than one bit of information and we educate ourselves 
a lot more, I think, than some people do. But moving off that, of course, as with any crisis, you're always going to get those low-life scum-sucking pigs that want to take advantage of it. So again, there has been a number of scams popping up about people doing things and, and just, oh, you know. How? I mean, what possesses someone? Well, what possesses someone to try and rob and steal from people at the best of times? But when something like this is going on, if you are doing this, then you're frankly pretty sick and twisted and you, you well, yeah. But I don't want to finish on a negative. So what I'm going to say is, the amount of people that have come together, the amount of community spirit, and you know, this is what we need more stories of. More stories of how communities are helping each other, how people are helping each other, how neighbours are helping each other. Like I said, I live in a small village. We have a small village shop. They've obviously had to put things in place. They're making sure that you can only go in one person at a time. They are, you know, are one family member at a time. They are limiting people. They are closing for set periods of time to go out and deliver to those people that need it the most so that people aren't being left, with this, left without essentials. And we need more stories like that. So just remember that, you know, during this time we did come together as a people, as a, as a, as, as, well, as the United Kingdom together to help each other out. And I think... That is what we need to take away from this. You know, we need to, in these times that are horrible and dark, look for the positives and the light and the togetherness that we have all brought together and helping out where we can. So thank you for watching and more to come soon, more uplifting stuff to come soon. So thank you. Jet plane headed up to the sky Spread wings and the clouds getting